Pre-Works Review. Unboxed. So, with this Creeworks ultrasonic cleaner, there's one discrepancy I already found right off the bat with it, which if we open the lid, we see we got nice hot water, but we set the temperature and all that to max, 175. Now, if I set this in here, we'll see we are about 147 with the temp probe. Hopefully that's showing up well. Now, I'm gonna keep this in the water and we turn this down until it clicks off for the temp. Which right there it was. And on this dial, it is showing the temp is set to 105 when it finally clicks off. We have 147 on our probe and the click back on is only a little bit from there. Probably about 110-ish maybe on that dial. But there's a first strike. The temperature on this is not accurate. So be advised if you're using this and you set the temperature, it's probably hotter than it actually is. And I don't know if that's because a thermocoupler is inside measuring away from the basin, or if it's just what we'd expect. So for this next part, I was, well, I've seen that this is very scientific testing to see if your ultrasonic cleaner works. That's taking a piece of tin foil and throwing it in there and setting it for a minute. So we'll see if we get any holes in there. Just kind of throw that in there. She's floating on the top. Set it for one minute. And nothing so far. So that's a dud. So after messing with this for a few moments off camera and double checking the manual if we set it to one minute we see nothing happens turn the dial a little bit more and it works so the time dial is not accurate either i don't know if it's a true one minute interval or not but we'll see what happens the moment we're just going to see if this gets a bunch of holes or something in well that wasn't a minute so okay well I am going to play with this more off camera, see how this tin foil looks after the fact, and then I'll come back. So I am back, it's been roughly a minute now, so I'm just gonna turn this dial to off. Which for some reason, if you crank it up, the time still seems to work. I don't know why that is, but we can just say the timer on it, not so great either. So there's kind of two points. So I'll take the lid off and let's see. Which it definitely put a bunch of holes and all that in there. Let me get that off, but we can come see. Definitely see we got some holes and dents. This is the side that was facing towards the transducers, which I'm not really sure what this is supposed to scientifically tell us, but I can see it's working at least. It's doing something. So we're gonna move on to the next part. Crumple this up. Hopefully the wife don't get mad I used your tin foil. And I'm just gonna put some Dawn dish soap in here. And I got an oil pickup tube that is absolutely covered in sludge. I mean, just bad. And that was part of the reason I wanted to get a big ultrasonic cleaner like this was the deep clean parts that are like it. I'm hoping with the uh, transducers, it'll kind of mix that in real good. And if it don't, well, I can say this is kind of a flop, but I got this on a lightning deal on Amazon with a 5% coupon and it brought it to, I think, 
$221 after tax. So, at the end of the day, I guess you kind of get what you pay for, but it does beat my little Harbor Freight unit so far, I guess. We'll go that way. At least, hopefully, I won't have the issues with the temperature knocking out the time I'm able to use it for and everything else. So, I'm going to go grab that oil pickup tube. We're going to stick it in. And I'm going to set it for the full 30 minutes and we'll see how good it comes. So you can just hold on a second. So here's that oil pickup tube. It's kind of hard to see, but a lot of that's built on everything else. I don't want to flip this thing around because I just had it in a tote. But we're going to stick it in here and see how clean things come out. So... I guess one thing to note, I definitely could have added more water for this test, but it'll be all right. So let's see how it actually does cleaning apart. Hey, this is future me and right now you're kind of seeing a time lapse of this thing being cleaned and hindsight I mean having only three gallons in here worked out pretty good because you can see the difference in the spots with what's being cleaned and what's not and I do want to apologize for the sound I did not think while I was recording that the ultrasonic cleaner was going to distort the sound that much so I hope you kind of bear with me I do apologize for that all right, so it's been 30 minutes. I definitely seen it was cleaning that whole time. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. That was some good cleaning action and all that. But there's a few things I wanna check. I kept the temperature maxed out pretty much the whole time it was running to see if it gained anything, which my garage right now is about 60 degrees with this garage heater running behind me, the electric one. So, the temp out here has been pretty consistent, and I'm hoping that'll not skew anything per se with the heating of this, but I'm not gonna stick the probe in the water this time because of how dirty it is. I'm actually gonna use the infrared, which I will say right off the bat, I know the infrared is a couple degrees lower, so we'll see what it comes out as, but I know if it's within five degrees, if it's five degrees lower, that means this ultrasonic cleaner was pretty much able to hold a certain temp. Which actually, we're 147 right now in the water, and I'm pointing that right at the water, 148 now. But you can see, and that's still with the heating element on, it's actually climbing a little bit. So that means we're probably about 154, maybe 155, but somewhere in that range. So it actually did gain a little bit of temperature. Now, beforehand, I did have the temperature running for about 20 minutes on a timer before I kind of gave up measuring it. So figure that in with the 30 minutes of runtime we just had, which you'll see in that time lapse. That means this thing's not going to heat incredibly well, at least in my temperatures. I already started off with about 130 degree water when I pre-filled this, which that's only three gallons in there which it looks to be about half capacity so i'm going to say the rating on this being 7.9 gallons is pretty true but now probably for the most important thing is see how the part came out because that's the only thing that matters with this if we get a clean part out of all this all's good and this thing works and it was money well spent especially for all these grimy parts that just would have been miserable to scrub by hand
which wow you can definitely see the difference you can see the part that was actually sticking out of the ultrasonic cleaner right here it's all oily and there's still sludge there and all that but the submerged parts here and all that pretty dang clean Oop. let's take a look inside there see if i can get it angled just right might be hard to see on camera but there was a lot of sludge build up and everything else in there if you've seen one of my previous shorts you would see what motor this came out of and how the oil pan was and this thing was just sucking straight sludge i don't see that any longer and I'll probably run this through quite a few more times just to make absolutely sure get this as clean as possible. Along with some actual, you know, hand scrubbing, at least for what I can get, and some tube cleaners down in there. Because I want to make sure this is absolutely clean before I put it into the new 6 liter engine. But I would say definitely worth it. Everything that was in the bath came out pretty darn clean. I think a few more cycles running through there would really finish cleaning up. I'll put it that way. And I'm getting some sludge on my hands, wiping on the part. But all in all, that actually came out pretty good. I'm going to actually set that in the other way. Because I'm going to keep running it here for a little bit. Just to finish cleaning that last little bit. But for 220 bucks, especially for something that fits large parts and i guess i'll be kind here because i got a tape measure because they don't advertise this on the amazon listing but the basin is 19 and three quarter inches uh long we have a width of 11 and three quarter and this is measuring from the basket we got I'd say about seven and a half on the basket there. If I were to take this basket out, it would actually probably be a little lower. I don't know by how much. I didn't pay that much attention. But we'll just say at least an inch and a half, but an inch. Actually, we'll just go with an inch. It'd probably be about an inch deeper. So the basin's pretty big, and there's a lot of dirty parts off this old engine, like the windage tray and all that, and... I haven't tried the windage tray, but I'm pretty confident it's going to fit for the most part. And worse comes to worse, even with something like this, you can rotate the part around and run another cycle and still be all good. So all in all, even though the temperature's off and the timer's a little wonky, which I'll actually touch on that quick. Because I noticed when I was running that 30 minute cycle, when it was at the one minute mark, it didn't shut off. It wasn't like before when I first tried to, when I just turned it that one minute mark for that aluminum test, where it didn't turn on and all that. When it was set to the 30 minute mark, it actually went all the way to the off mark on the timer and all that before it cut out. Now, I'll admit, I did not time this thing while it was running, but I'm pretty sure it's close to half an hour. If it really matters, we could time it and all that and truly see how accurate that timer is. But if you're just sticking a part in there, 30 minutes and all that on the timer is a pretty long time. I'd say it's pretty close. I was watching Better Call Saul during this and doing a few other things. So all in all, I'd say this is a pretty good investment. This definitely will save me a lot of time. And once I get to cleaning the other engine parts, I can just set this up, let it go on my workbench and all that while I'm off doing something else. Because I got a lot of parts to sandblast and all that, which are shortly going to get stuck in this thing. That way, I don't have to stick greasy parts in my sandblaster. So, yeah. Creeworks Ultrasonic Cleaner, I would say was a definite win. Especially being almost an 8-gallon capacity. Because you can put some pretty big parts in here. And... Just judging from this, you could clean a lot at once, and you could clean the bulk of your engine parts, no problem. So, I kind of wanted to touch on something real quick. I brought my Harbor Freight unit over, just so you can kind of see the size difference. And you can hear how loud this Creeworks actually is, because I realized that, oh, 
I really didn't get too much footage of it running. And right now, this is just me talking over it. So you can actually have an idea of how this is. If I step outside the garage and this wall, only that one panel right there is uninsulated. The rest is insulated with drywall. I can just sort of hear the Cree works running, which the Harbor Freight one, I can kind of hear it too. So if you're looking for kind of a comparison and all that, but you can see the size difference between the two and this little Harbor Freight unit, I actually did use to clean all the pistons out of the six liter along with the connecting rods. And then I put them in my blast cabinet and soda blasted them. And then once again, they went back into this unit to get fully cleaned, which that was probably a couple months ago. This has been a little bit of a ongoing project as you can tell. But the thing with this Harbor Freight unit, which they have a newer one, which looks about the same as these Chinese ones. The Cree work actually looks a bit different than what you typically see, like the Vivers and all that. And the Harbor Freight ones, they look like the Viver units, just with the central machinery brand on. But this little central machinery brand, it's actually advertised more as a jewelry and all that type of deal. But it does work for these type of parts. But there's a couple pitfalls which this right here, the TC button is your heat, which it takes a long, long time to eat this. When I was doing the pistons, I was just getting the hottest water I could out of my sink, which is about 130 degrees, filling this, putting that on, letting it sit for an hour to bring it up to God knows what temperature. And this has a couple intervals, but the highest interval is 480 seconds which off the top of my head right now, I probably should have seen what that was off camera. I don't know what that is in minutes, but it's not very long. I think it's like eight minutes, something like that. But I had to run a couple cycles to make sure everything was clean, especially when they got pulled out of the six liter to begin with, because they were just grimy, everything else. The six liter sat around for a little bit the piston rings were all gudged up and just didn't make for a great cleaning experience. I could have absolutely thrown them in my parts washer and cleaned them. But once again, whenever I can use something like this that allows me to clean the parts while not actually having to clean them myself and I can do something else, I opt for these units, which the Harbor Freight one, the problem I have with it, to get it up to hot temperature, which solvents, even just this soap, works better the hotter you can get it. Just, it makes everything more viscous. And that's where these things can really do their best work, is when everything's nice hot, oils, sludges, and all that, grime, it just gets more viscous. And these ultrasonic cleaners have an easier time getting it off the part and into whatever solution you're using. Problem is with the Harbor Freight unit, when I would let this thing warm up for an hour to get it nice and hot, especially when I was reusing solutions constantly, just trying to stretch that a little bit out of it, make it, I guess, more economical. The problem is I could run a cycle and then it would have its overheat or I guess duty cycle limit and I couldn't use the unit for two three hours and that whole time the solution's getting cold all that and then it would rinse and repeat to do all eight pistons out of this engine which is actually right next to me it took a long time a very long time to do that but I'm hoping with this tree works which we'll see maybe I'll make an update video then if this is popular and people want to see. I'm hoping the big thing with this Cree Works unit, it doesn't take as long to clean the parts. I don't have to run it through as many cycles. And as we see at the temp thing, it's not so accurate, but it's big enough. I have an immersion heater I use in my parts washer. So I can really just stick that in, let that heat up the water. It's a 1500 watt immersion heater. And I know it'll get boiling hot in that probably in 20 minutes. 
So I can eliminate the temperature thing. And even if this thing cuts out on me, cuts out on me uh, early for running things, hopefully I can stretch out as many cycles as I can do on the thing before it has to kind of reset, cool off, whatever it needs to do. Whereas the Harbor Freight unit, it's not deep enough I can put my immersion heater in it. So that kind of leads to that problem where I'm relying solely on the heating element in that to do that, which cuts out my effective cycle times, which as this Cree works, if it has the same problem, I can bypass that and get as many cycles as I need out of it, or at least maximize the cycle time without actually turning the unit on and still having a hot solvent. But I just kind of want to touch on that. This thing worked great for what I've used it for. So I'm gonna keep it around. I'll use it probably for little parts and all that where I don't feel like finding container to kind of not use the full eight gallon capacity. But all in all, I'm hoping this tree works works out better. That was kind of like the primary reason I got that 